Welcome back to Orange Nation. I don't know why they are, but I'll get to that later. Artist of the day, the Gin Blossoms. This one, as long as it matters, Steve. All right. Uh, tonight's game matters, no, I'll tell you that, matter. for both these teams. So you've got a 7-1 and one Cornell team coming to town to take on 5-3 and three Syracuse, and we are pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Big Red, Brian Earl, our guest here on the show. Uh, coach, great to have you on. How are you today? Good, good. I appreciate you having me. Uh, we'll see how I'm doing tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we appreciate you coming on on a game day. I know it's busy for you. Uh, let's uh, let's start with your team start seven and one uh, through eight games, uh, playing good basketball here right off the bat. Uh, what have you learned about your team through these first eight games? Uh, well, we we've uh, managed to win some games that were close. Um, you know, we play a fast pace, and sometimes the the games can go up and down. Um, and so we've managed to pull out a couple uh, victories where we needed to execute down the stretch. And so we're always nervous about that. Um, got a good win against Fordham and dropped one to George Mason relatively close. So trying to just build on resilience in those moments when you need it. Yeah, four and one in games decided by ten points or less, and um, it, you know I would I would imagine that you know the lessons learned in these close games now will help you come you know February, March, uh, and beyond, and it, it's good to get tested right this time of year. I would assume. Yeah, I think so. It's um, you know our league, the Ivy League, is is just uh, very very competitive from top to bottom. I mean, some of the teams don't have a great record right now, but they're going to give everyone a, a run for their money, and so. We've had years in the last few seasons where we had the most, you know, under three point decisions in the country, which is never good for your uh, nervous system, but <laughs> it, it keeps you competitive. And so the, to stay close and, and, and pull some out is a big deal for us because only four of us make it to the Ivy League tournament. And that's what everyone's trying to for at the end of the season. You know, you, you look at, at your roster and uh, it, it's balanced scoring across the board, right? I'm, I'm looking at the stats right now. You've got six players essentially at averaging nine points or, or uh, yeah, nine points per game or better. Um, it, it, talk to me a little bit about that balance. And uh, I would imagine as a coach, you, you want balance, right? Because it makes you more difficult to defend. Yeah, I mean, the guys have sort of bought into what we do and, and we're, we're a little unorthodox. We play a lot of guys and, and even some guys who haven't had a ton of minutes in the last few games might poke their heads into a game. And so everybody's sort of got to be ready to go. And so it does lend itself to, to a lot of guys playing and contributing. And, and uh, you know, so it, I think it is for other teams hard to, to prepare for um, because you just don't know who – the next guy coming in is sometimes. And if you as a coach don't know, the players don't know for sure. So um, it's uh, it can keep people on their toes. It can also backfire, which has happened too. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a lot of variance in, in some of the results. Does, does that help with buy-in among your players, the fact that, you know, it's not a, a tight rotation so that it's only maybe seven guys getting into games that, you know, as you said, somebody who maybe hasn't played, you know, it's a good opportunity, good situation for him. You put him in. Does that, does that help with, with, uh, you know, how close the team is and uh, competitive at practice and, and all, all those sorts of things. The fact that, as you said, guys got to be ready to play. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think everyone is on their toes. We've had a few guys. I mean, one guy, one game this season, a, a guy didn't have his jersey on and because he just, I don't think he thought he was going to play. And and we we, uh, we threw him in there for to, to bring a little um a little help in different areas. And so that, uh, I think it does keep them on their toes. They know in practice every day we're, we're uh, evaluating and, and anyone could be the next guy up. So it does help with competitiveness and, and uh, buy-in, I think. All right, take us through uh, your personnel a little bit, if you could, and, and let's start with uh, Sean Hansen, your, your team's leading scorer, averaging about 12 and a half per game. Yeah, Sean is someone who's played a few years for us uh, post-COVID. Um, he's a, a big guy, 6'9", goes really hard, which is not always the case with bigger guys. And so his, he can shoot it. He's scoring on the post a lot. Um, but I think his sort of motor is, is the thing that distinguishes him a little bit. All right, so you you're uh got 80 made threes uh through the eight games. So I you know, I'm not great in math, but I know that's 10 per game. How important is the three-point shot for your team and you, you know, you're going up against a, a an opponent tonight in Syracuse that hasn't been shooting the three all that well? Yeah, I mean, we're going to take them. I, I don't I don't think we're sitting there saying let's lead the country in attempts, but um there's not a lot of uh 
not a lot of coaching from me saying don't take that shot. And so um, it's important. You know, we've gone up there the last couple of years and, and haven't made shots, and, and we're going to have to uh, tonight or whenever we play at the Dome. And so it's important. We're going to take them. Hopefully uh, more go in than than normal. But um, it's a, it, we, we can keep people spread out a little bit, and, and that's because we have threats everywhere on the perimeter. You mentioned uh, Sean Hansen. We talked about him. Who are a couple other players that, uh, you know, Syracuse fans in the building tonight need to be aware of and, um, it, you know, in, in terms of guys that are leading leading your team? Yeah, I mean, I think Chris Mann and uh, Nazir Williams, Isaiah Gray are three who have a lot of games under their belt. They, they play hard. They play fast, which is important to us. Uh, Chris um, Manning can, can uh, you know, is one of the top – guys in the country and steal percentage. Um, and then Isaiah is, is someone who mixes it up a little bit, can get to the rim, whereas most of our guys are, are shooters. And Nas is sort of our, our most decorated returning player. He's a junior who's um, working his way back after an injury this summer, but has a little bit of that um, you know poise that has, has gotten us some wins at the end of games here over the last couple of weeks. What are your impressions of this Syracuse team that, that you're going to face tonight? Obviously, it's a it's a different look, right? First time in uh, almost 50 years that somebody other than Jim Beheim is the, is the head coach here. But it's a new look, a little bit of a new style. What, what stands out to you about Syracuse? Well, I think that I would have liked to have played them earlier in the season, probably, yeah. <laughs> um, which is a compliment to, to the, their staff. And, uh, you know, they're improving. Um, they... Uh, they they have the guards who are are really dynamic off the dribble and attacking and and um, some shooting that I think as guys have settled in um, some of the benefit of playing them early in the year was they were missing some of those shots and now I think their percentages might come back up and so um, I, I it, it strikes me that they you know after so long playing zone there for years that they're improving rapidly and so. Um, you know, the, the further on down the line you're going to play a Syracuse, the, the more trouble it's going to be for you, I think. You know, this is a game that, that we look forward to every year, you know, when Syracuse and Cornell get together. And, you know, not not every year, uh, you know, you go into it thinking it's a it's a, you know going to be an, uh, an evenly matched game. It, there is that feel this year, though, uh, Coach. It feels like this is a, a game you guys, um, you know, have a really good chance to win. Um, I guess take me through tonight and, and what you're hoping to get out of this game. Obviously, I know you're hoping to get a, a win out of it, but it's an early season game against, a you know, an upper level opponent. What As a program, what are you trying to get out of this game tonight? I think just compete. I mean, um, th- we, we again, haven't against that zone the last few years, there've been some open shots that had to be hurried because that's the way coach built that zone. You can get the three pointers. It's just, they're uncomfortable. And so that'll be a different look tonight. Um, and so I, I just, you know, I, I, after the last win we won the other day, I, I felt as bad as I have or, uh, after a win. And, you know, um, I, I would love to compete tonight, but I just want to see that we're doing everything to improve going into the Ivies later uh, next month. Um, and so I, I just want to see a performance where we're doing what we do, which is play fast, play loose, um, and and sort of dictate tempo a little bit on both sides of the ball. All right, and along those lines, I was going to ask you about the keys to tonight. Sounds like tempo is going to be a key for you guys. Uh, you know, lay out the blueprint for us, you know, how this is a, you know, a, a, a close game going into the final five minutes or so. Right. I could lie to you like I normally do, which is like we're going to slow it down and take 30 <laughs> seconds. Uh, but, that you know, we we tend to play fast. Um, we do take a lot of three-pointers, and, and um, I think – you know, it'll be an interesting chess match to see. Um, now they play fast too, and I think are comfortable with that. But um, you know, we we need to sort of play the way we play, which is getting the ball up the court, taking the first good shot that we can get, um, and then keeping those guys um, from dictating with us on defense how the game's going to be played. And so there's a lot that's going to go into it. I, I don't know if there's one thing I can say. Uh, Oh, we're doing well because this is happening, but just the overall feel of the game um, will will sort of get it. You know, as as long as we're 
we're getting the shots we want and, and trying to get them to take the shots we want, I think we'll be all right. Colgate obviously had this team on the ropes, you know, whatever it was three weeks ago. Do you take anything from that game of what Colgate did right for the first, you know, 25, 30 minutes of that contest? Or is it, or is it more about you guys tonight and what you do? Yeah, I mean, I think I take from everybody, and and um, I, I'm very close with the Colgate coach, and um, that was a tough one for him. Um, but you did see a lot of of promise if you're a Syracuse fan um, with how Syracuse fought back and how they they uh, turned Colgate over at the end and stuck with what they do. And I watched the LSU game, obviously Virginia um, LSU is missed a lot of threes, and you can see what happens when that when that goes the wrong way and so just everything uh we can we can take from uh these games but colgate obviously is sort of a similar size even though they play a couple bigs a similar you know level to us and so i think we play differently but you could see that colgate was really um managing the turnovers to start and getting good shots and sort of doing what they do and then syracuse dictated the end of the game all right, Coach. Uh, I know it's a busy day for you, being a game day and all. We appreciate you finding a few minutes for us. Congratulations on your great start. Keep it up. Uh, and uh, thanks again for coming on. Best of luck tonight. Yeah, I appreciate ha- you having me. Thank you. All right. That's the head coach of the Cornell Big Red, Brian Earl. And with that, we'll uh, open it up to, to phone lines. But we, we've got the match game coming up next, right, Paul? Yes. So we're going to we're gonna bring on Matt Govendo. We're going to do our match game. And then uh, we'll open it up to, to phone calls from there at 315-437-7644. Yeah, Colgate, Cornell, they both got it going. Uh, Lemoyne's going to get there soon. Yeah, Lemoyne uh, now a D1 program. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been fun. It's a hotbed. Yeah. I mean, let's not forget about Oswego. I mean, what Jason Leone has done up there, um, you know, with the NCAA tournament appearances and, you know, Elite Eight runs, and it's 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 been a whole lot of fun. So, yeah, a lot of quality basketball in this area. We'll hit a timeout. We're back after this on ESPN.